Men, welcome back. Thanks for joining me today as we are continuing on a journey of becoming the men that God wants us to be. And one way we're doing that is by, um, by reading a couple of books together. Um, one is Tender Warrior uh, by Stu Weber, and one is uh, The Exemplary Husband by Scott Stewart, Stuart Scott. And so today we're going to read a few pages out of The Exemplary Husband book. And so uh, we are picking up on page 90. We're in chapter 7 on page 90. And starting at the top of page 90, it's, it says, What is worship? And so to be a real man, uh, the man that God wants us to be, we must worship God. We must worship the one true God and not, not allow uh, idols to get into our heart, which he's going to talk about a little bit here. So um, let's pick up on page 90. What is worship? Secondly, if we are going to maintain a heart of worship for God alone, we must have a clear understanding of what worship is. Some people believe that worship equals praise or adoration. In actuality, worship involves this and much more. Worship is to be an all-consuming and all-encompassing preoccupation. What we worship, we will adore, sacrifice for, focus on, submit to, seek after, hope in, serve, give to, speak about, look to for peace, meaning, and happiness, spend a great amount of thought, time, energy, and resources on. What God hates, idol worship. God hates idol worship. I am indebted to Dave Powelson, he says, from the Christian Counseling and Educational Foundation in Glenside, Pennsylvania, for his teaching on this subject. Worship in the broad sense encompasses all of these aspects. God is the only one worthy of this worship. If we revere something other than God in the, in the above ways, we will not live our lives unto God alone. God does not want his people to worship anything or anyone else because he wants their hearts to belong to him. Since we know that God deserves to have us live our lives unto him, we can understand why God forbids us to worship anyone or anything else. In the Bible, God warns us often about misplaced worship because he knows that every man's heart is prone to worship other things. He refers to this misplaced worship as idolatry. This is an abomination to God because it robs him of the glory that is due him. Idolatry is the worst thing we can do before God. The Bible says in 1 John 5, 21, Little children, guard yourselves from idols. Even those who know Christ as Savior and Lord can find themselves involved in idol worship when they wane in their worship of God. We can understand this better if we more clearly define an idol. So what is an idol? Perhaps when you think of idolatry, you think only of graven images or the gods of false religion. But we can be engaged in idolatry even though we are not physically bowing down to someone or something. How can we recognize idols of the heart? When we make something other than God our primary focus and goal, we are clearly engaged in idol worship. We worship what we believe we desperately need or must have in order to be happy. When we place this kind of emphasis on something, it is actually a sinful lust. Even a good desire can turn into a lust. If we habitually sin in order to get something or we habitually sin because we cannot have something, chances are we are worshiping that thing. Some of these sins might include lying, manipulating, being, selfish, being selfishly moody, withdrawing, complaining, compromising, getting sinfully angry, having a pity party, having a bitter attitude, worrying, despairing, judging God, and so on. The truth is, when we worship idols, we are living for self. Thus, an idol is anything that we consistently make equal to or more important than God in our attention, desire, devotion, and choices. 
What people may worship other than or in addition to God of the Bible can include security, material things. He's got quite a list here, so I'm just going to I'm just going to list these off that he's listing. And again, this list is what people may worship other than or in addition to the God of the Bible. Security, material things, knowledge, control, wealth, themselves, good health, other gods of the cults, another person, a god of their own making, pleasure or comfort, pain-free or trouble-free, free life, an accomplishment, fair or good treatment, the good opinion of others, significance, success, or impact, physical appearance, a desired circumstances of life, ambition. When we worship an idol, we give our heart to it rather than God. A Christian, of course, will not give his heart over entirely, but he can certainly have divided allegiance Setting our heart steadfastly on something other than on God is being unfaithful toward God. We must not revere any person or thing in any way that is only meant for God. Nothing is to take his place or even come close to it. A divided heart leads to the self-deception of divided worship. We cannot truly worship God with our lives and someone or something else at the same time. God does not accept divided worship. We will not even be able to continue in our deception of divided worship very long. When one is attempting to serve two masters, he will naturally forget God more and more and begin to serve only the wrong master. We need to ask God to help us unite our heart to seek only him. Teach me, the Bible says in Psalm 86, 11, Teach me your way, O Lord. I will walk in your truth. Unite my heart to fear your name. Thankfully, God's children will not continue to forget him because God is faithful to act. He does not forget. He is determined and faithful to reveal our idols or vanities and to reclaim our heart. God must do this for us because idols are self-deceiving, self-serving, and self-destroying. He is faithful to do this in at least four ways. So here's the four ways that God reveals idols to us. Number one, God has given us his word and his spirit to consistently speak to this issue. Number two, God may frustrate our idols by withholding them, or he may allow us to experience the futility of our idols and re- and refugees, oh, refuges, by granting them. Um, number three, God may give us a living example, a person of true worship to convict us. Or number four, God may administer loving discipline. Because God cares for his own, a person who is not being convicted, frustrated, or chastened in his idol worship may not be one of God's children at all. We're going to stop there for today. And um, the next section is, is called False Refuge, um, Refuges Refuge, refuges in Marriage. Uh, false Refuges in Marriage. And so uh, we're going to stop there for now. Uh, I think we've got enough to chew on as it relates to... Um, idols that we allow to get into our heart instead of instead of having our whole heart for God. Men, in order to be the real men that God has created us to be, we must allow God to have our whole heart. It's so easy to drift and allow other things to sink into our heart and 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 become more important to us than God and what he thinks of us. So let's, it, 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 let's make sure that we ask God, God, is there anything in my heart that has become more important than you? And if there is, men, let's be, let's practice be, being men of God and confess that to him and uh, repent of it, turn from it and give our heart fully back to him. Father, thank you for the amazing God that you are. Thank you that you want our whole heart. And thank you for the scripture in, in 1 Chronicles 16, 9, that, uh, or actually 2 Chronicles 16, 9, that says that um, 
that you will strongly support those whose hearts are fully yours. Father, I want my heart to be fully yours. And so please expose anything in my heart that I would need to confess so that it can be fully yours. I want to be fully yours. Please continue to make me and, and those who are on this journey with me. Make us into the men of God that you want us to be. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Men, thanks for joining me today. Next time um, uh, we'll go, jump into the other books. But um, continue to fix your eyes on Christ. Have a great rest of your weekend.